This is where it was telling us to turn right. Yep. That is not a road. That is a... That is nothing. Today, we were off on another adventure. We were headed to the Tea Creek Trailhead in Monongahela National Forest. The roads took us deep into the forest, and we drove late into the night, stopping occasionally to appreciate the stars above. Our drive continued on to rough, rocky roads. Brace for impact. <laughs> Go to red alert. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not... Yeah, let's go ahead and go back. We had come to a particularly deep dip in the road filled with large rocks and decided to back up and assess the situation. Hmm. Um... So we're gonna go take a look at this bump because maybe you can just go over it and it looked a lot more severe than it was. I mean, they've got to have some expectation that people are gonna drive. Yeah, no. I think in general, they have an expectation that you need to have at least something like what we got. I mean, this is a Subaru Outback, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point. It's of called it, an right? Outback? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, guys. This, <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> it looked way worse than it was. No, that's the funny part about the dark, is that you just can't judge anything. So wait, what's your conclusion? We keep going, for sure. And so, we continued on. But the road wasn't quite as smooth as Robbie had thought. Okay, you got it. We made it past the dip, but the rocky overgrown road was still much rougher than we expected. Probably good to buckle up, man. Just in case. Here's my kind of philosophy on this type of thing. You only live one time, right? Mm -hmm. So push it to the limit to where you know you're not gonna get hurt. We know that we can always stop and pitch the tent and then just stay overnight until it's light, get help if we need it. Not that we will, but... As, as soon as day comes, we'll, everything's fine, you know? Yeah. I actually have done this exact type of driving before, so I know that we can do it. No mm. problem. Like, that sound, don't worry about that sound. That's just a twig that I ran over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, here's a road. Okay, so clearly oh. Google Maps was messing with us. Yeah. So it just made us take a shortcut. I have to say, this is uh, actually quite exhilarating, so... <laughs> That back there, I, mean, I was just like, this this cannot be gravel road. <laughs> gravel road is one thing, but that was like <laughs> that was literally that like was an old road. abandoned road or something. Yeah. <laughs> we were relieved to make it back to a paved road, but now there were even more navigational challenges in our way. I think that's where the trail's at, because this says turn right, and that's where it, it ends. What what the road to the right look like? The road to the right is um, it looks rocky, but I think it's um, what I road is see this? Anything? There's nothing there. This says turn right. Yeah, I know. But that's definitely not. <laughs> yeah, we might be legit lost, actually. What in the world? This is where it was telling us to turn right. That is a... That is nothing. Our GPS told us to turn right, off of the road, and into a ditch. We started to think we had entered the forest from the wrong entrance. We've got a few options. <laughs> the the only like real option is we kind of have to get back out to there. Oh no, this we're we're at the. Maybe this is the part. No, we're there. Look, look, look. See this shape here. 
That matches this exactly. So we are like... Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so... No, we're there. Yeah, we're just here. We've arrived. Did we come in from this we room? We came in from there, okay. which is over there. And that's what, what we're facing right, right now. No, so that, that one up here is that. This is look, turning look, right. Look, 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 look. Why don't we just go right forward a little bit and see if we see any signs? No, no, no. We are at the dot. That's what I'm trying to tell you. No, no, no. We're, we're right at this intersection here. No, no. We could be at that intersection, but I think we're at the dot because there's... I don't know. Let's, let's just go up ahead and see what it looks like. Our spot on the GPS had matched up perfectly with where the road leading to the trailhead should have been on the map. It just stops. Could there... We searched up and down the road looking for a trailhead or a sign, but a found nothing more than some ditches and random yeah, stakes. Having no luck from the car, we decided to investigate on foot. Oh, but right, this right. looks like it could be a trail, but right, it just right, stops. Right. Like it goes down for a little bit and then there's just there's like nothing a mound of dirt. We're definitely in the right place GPS-wise. Yeah, there's no question about that. There's no question about that, but there's really no trails. See, look, it's just like, it just stops. No trail markers, nothing. It's like, yeah, it's like I think we should just, uh, for tonight, we're gonna reset and then just sleep next to the car. I guess that kind of dashed my plan to have a fire tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna eat something at least. Yeah, so. me too. It was a bit disappointing to not have found our trail after hours of driving and searching around, but the beautiful stars and the cool night air kept our spirits high. It's gonna be a good old fashioned sleepover in the car. <laughs> it's so funny being a human. I mean, it's like our, our sight is so bad. Just at night, you're just hopeless. <laughs> Stars are amazing. Yeah. How are you doing in there? <laughs> I want some of these hot dogs. These are super soft. I'll get some. I will partake. <clears throat> oh, by hot dogs, you mean canned weenies. It's Vienna sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Some upscale canned weenies. This is actually, this is almost more fun than if it went right. <laughs> It'll be all cozy. <laughs> a little twist is always fun, as long as you're not screwed because of it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. And we know we're fine. I see you've replenished your kraut stores. After eating, it was time for a cozy night in the car beneath the stars. The next day, Andrew and I woke up at dawn, and we only had one thing on our mind, finding the trail. That's this trailhead. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. Mm -hmm. There is supposed to be a trailhead here. <laughs> <laughs> For once, off. we didn't make a mistake. It was just something's up with the road or something. Maybe that road isn't even connected. Maybe you go back to the trailhead and there's just some random road shooting off where all the other trails come out of. I know. We've got sunlight now. Let's find out. <laughs> Like, if you look at the map here, we're just going back up this road. Well, there, see where it starts, like, getting parallel? There's something. Right here? It wasn't clear from the map whether our trailhead was along the road we had driven on, or at the end of a missing right turn that we hadn't been able to find last night. Move. We decided to investigate both possibilities. It's one way to warm up. <laughs> Let's hope. Oh, like maybe right here? Oh. Nope, it's just another one of these. Huh. Well, the other thing to consider is the trail goes up higher on elevation, so it's like going on the top of the ridge, I think. Whoa! Whoa! Are those tires? Yes! Some construction equipment? I don't know. 
And what's that? It's like black rock. I don't know. Maybe that's from the road that used to exist. <laughs> this is like an episode of Lost. <laughs> it's funny that it's Halloween. <laughs> well, let's just at least check this area up here because that looks like a nice open area. Okay, so we saw this last night. I don't know what it is. It's his map. This has to be a trail marker, right? Maybe this is a trail, but... It looks like it hasn't been used in ages. <laughs> like this, this looks like it's never been used. With no luck, we decided to head back towards the car. As we looked up at the sky, we realized we had a much more efficient way to search for our trail. If we can find a trail, then we should be sitting pretty. Because then we can find where that trail leads to. Find the trailhead. The view from high up was beautiful, but our focus was on the ground below. I like don't see any trailhead. <laughs> Definitely found something. I can't tell from this distance if it's a road or a trail, but I'm gonna see where it starts. It looked like we had found a road leading to a small parking area. and it did seem to connect to the main road further up ahead. We got in the car and moved on. We pulled onto the road, and finally, we were on our way to the Tea Creek Trailhead. It was still early in the morning when we grabbed our bags and made our way onto the trail. Our plan was to take trail 448 south, hiking around a small loop and camping along the way, before hiking back north on trail 449. After a night cooped up in the car, it felt great to finally be hiking out on the trail. As we made our way through a patch of forest, the early morning sun hid behind the hills. All the leaves had fallen, but there was still quite a bit of greenery around us. So down here, these miniature looking pine trees are club mosses. This is a fan club moss. I'm not quite sure what this one is, but they're both sporophytes, different species of moss. And they stay green through the winter, really pretty. Both this fan club moss and this hair cap moss are sporophytes, non-fruiting plants that produce spores to multiply. And further up ahead was another interesting plant. Yeah, give this a whiff. You smell it? I smell <laughs> something, but I can't... Uh, remember what it is, like I can't recognize it. Anyway, this is a cherry birch. Oh, I smell it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like uh, minty. Like, oh. Is it minty? Yeah. It's like just... No, you know what it's like? It's like root beer. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's nah, not, yeah. Yep. That's not like a root beer. As it turns out, cherry birch is actually a bit minty, as it was once used as a wintergreen flavor substitute. The sun began shining through the trees as we continued on, and soon its rays illuminated all the plants and leaves around us. The yellow and orange leaves shined brightly, 
providing a colorful backdrop to the evergreens. And the luminescent fields of goldenrod created a dreamlike landscape. soon came to a trail sign, though we hadn't yet reached a junction. So yeah, we just keep going on this path because this is not an actual junction. Yeah, I think the sign is just telling us that we're going to be heading left here. Yeah. Make sure we don't go it looks like there's a trail deer here. trail there, so that's probably why. Yeah. Now, the trail took us into the woods. All around us were hemlock, birch, and beech trees. One of the best things about hiking in the autumn is experiencing the forest when its floor is clear of clutter and carpeted in soft leaves. And another advantage is that there's plenty of dry tinder to collect. Okay, so in this area, we've got a lot of good stuff for fire making. A lot of times you'll find these dead dried ferns and this is all just dead material, and it'll grow right back. This is good tinder for catching a spark. And over here, a bunch of fallen spruce twigs, which are usually really good kindling. I might just collect a bit. The trail now took us onto the side of a hill, from where we could see other hills in the distance. But even more beautiful was the glow of the leaves in the autumn sun's light. It is almost 11 o'clock, and it still feels like it's either twilight or morning right now. Well, I think it's the season, but also the fact that we're on a hill, there's all these big shadows being cast and all these shady areas. Yeah, like, I don't think the sun is going to get much higher than it is now. Because it's moving on a trajectory where it's going like this. Considering we usually get started, like, in the evening, <laughs> yeah, it really feels like the sun should be setting. <laughs> you say it's 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock the perfect time to fire up the stove and brew us some morning coffee. And the earlier tinder and kindling would be perfect to get the water boiling. My coffee's gonna be, be a little high maintenance this time. I also brought fixins for my coffee. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, so this was provided by our buddy Jim. You fill it up with water, you let it brew, then you break this cap off. Oh, exactly. Very cool. <laughs> wow, this trip really turned around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last night I was so confused. I was like, hey, what are we gonna do? <laughs> it wants us to turn right. There's clearly no road. <laughs> it's like getting chilly again. It like keeps fluctuating the temperature. Kai's gonna warm you up. <laughs> it's gonna warm you up good. <laughs> But like I said, I brought some fixins, so coffee purists look away. Even with instant coffee, some sweet cinnamon flakes and cream will give you a luxurious brew to enjoy on a cold morning. How well that pours. <laughs> <laughs> That's some grade A coffee right there. <sighs> no tannins. <laughs> <laughs> just like the way I make it at home. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help but smile when you got that cup of coffee in the morning. Oh man, that there is coffee and this is like, you're taking a swim in like the Willy Wonka factory. <laughs> it tastes like autumn or Christmas, like it actually tastes like autumn. We relished our coffee and the warmth that it brought. And Andrew, as per usual, looked around for wild edibles. So this here is a little partridge berry and you can see it's got these two little belly button things on it. And this is the berry of those white flowers we saw in Allegheny. It originally starts out as two separate white flowers, but they combine to form one fruit. And these are edible. That's what I'm having for breakfast. <laughs> Tastes like uh, seeds. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like nothing. <laughs> I got three partridges and a pear tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited to taste these flavorless berries. <laughs> oh, that was good. No, it's weird. It's like, 
when I, you bite it open, it tastes like it's going to be sweet. Yeah, yeah. Like it's got that same, but then nothing happens. <laughs> it's got a, a fruity initial flavor with an aftertaste of uh, dust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might just be tasting my breakfast too. <laughs> <laughs> Also nearby were some sour wood sorrels. After enjoying the sun a bit longer, we hiked on. Up ahead, Robbie had spotted something strange. What do you guys think happened right here? Whoa. It looks like a shelter for like a dog. Yeah. Can you imagine how unsettling it'd be if this were night? <laughs> <laughs> But even more fascinating to me were some strange things protruding from the leaf litter. So I want you guys to just smack the heck out of those two balls there. Smack them? <laughs> yeah. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> just... Oh man. Oh, they're like getting right in my nose. <laughs> so these are uh, pear-shaped puffballs, Lycoperdon pyroformes. So the genus name is Lycoperdon, which literally means wolf fart. Really? <laughs> Holy because cow. <laughs> But actually, these are edible earlier in the year. When they're more solid, you cut them in half and they're pure white. Those are the ones that are good to eat. Oh, and these awesome. actually grow on wood. Um, you can't really see the wood right now, but there's probably a piece of wood underneath here somewhere. Probably they're growing up, maybe. Yeah. Mm, oh, that's cool. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> It's fun to play with these dried puff balls during the cold season, and you needn't worry about inhaling the spores when there's such a small amount. In fact, the spores of the dried pear-shaped puff balls like these have been used to heal wounds. This trail is like so unused. It just feels like feels like we've just kind of wandered into some random forest, and we're just literally just going around wherever we want to go because the trail's so undefined. Before long, we entered a section of the forest that had many bright orange leaves still clinging to the branches. Everything around us felt magical, both above and below. There's some tiny eyelash mushrooms. If you look really close, they have like these tiny little eyelash looking things. They're like someone's eyelid <laughs> just <laughs> growing out of wood. As we hiked past the orange hardwood trees, we entered a mossy grove of evergreens. Holy cow. This was definitely not put here by accident. Look how sharp that is. The strange placement of the antler in the tree combined with the atmosphere of the woods around us made us feel as though we had entered a druid's home. Also adding to the greenery were the familiar rhododendrons. Every time I see all these rhododendrons, I think of the Smokies, but I think you see these all along the Appalachians. It's actually not a native plant, but I think it's been naturalized, so it's not so much harming the forest as becoming a part of it. These big waxy leaves are actually the first natural toilet paper I ever used. It didn't work very well. <laughs> It 
It's always amazing how soothing a simple forest can be. The previous night was filled with feelings of unease and confusion, but now we only felt absolute tranquility. After resting, we continued on the trail. We were back in deciduous forest and we soon came to a trail junction. Yeah, we're here, so. We are going to want to go right. According to the sign, we had only hiked a mile in about five hours' time. Though the mileage was painted over on the sign, so we suspected that this could be incorrect. Either way, we continued on through the woods in search of a campsite. The trail seemed even more unkempt the further we hiked. But soon, things opened up a bit and we saw massive boulders by the trail. A lot of times we think of hiking as just marching down a trail through the forest but it's also about physically interacting with the natural world and becoming a part of the environment around us. Here we go! Found a snake hole. <laughs> Not far from the boulders, we found some mushrooms, which had left a brown spore print on themselves. And there was also wood stained blue by the green elf cup mycelium. The trail became even harder to find, and we mistook a deer trail for the hiking path. Is this still the trail? <laughs> I'm gonna go back and take a look. We lost the blazes. That's not the trail, guys. Just from that alone, you can tell why there's so many blazes. Yeah. Like, it's so hard to tell what the trail is. Especially with all the leaves on the ground. Yeah, everything's just covered up and it looks all walkable. <laughs> We had found the junction leading to the small southern loop on our trail. And like the trail, the sign was in a similar state of disuse. One gust of wind. Okay, so right or left? I feel like right looks more promising campsite wise. Do we want to do the full loop? I think we can do the full loop and then head back to oh, camp you mean on the ridge. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we could start walking the loop, but I say if we see something really good, then we camp there. Yeah. Yeah, I bet we're the first people who have been through here in like a month at least. So you almost have to see the blue dot in the distance and like just find a way there. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed our chances of finding a campsite along this loop were slim. Wow, this trail is barely a trail. If the trail was hard to distinguish before, now it was practically non-existent. Yeah, I can see the next blaze. We could see the next blaze up ahead, but there was no clear way to get to it. We decided to split up to find the easiest way forward. You go that way. We'll go this way. Wow, this is unbelievable. This is like not even a trail anymore. As it turns out, both ways were cluttered with saplings and shrubs. Maybe there was some clearer path over there, I don't know. It's a bit dense here. Is it easier to go that way or? It's about the same. Maybe we're the only people who have been in this trail the whole year or something. There's another trail that connects to this loop. 
Well, there's another sign up here. We had reached the southern bend of the loop, which had another trail leading south. Now we have a choice. We can explore down here, go down on trail 410, or we can just head back on the loop and start setting up camp. If we explore, I say we take our packs up and just see a little bit. Let's do that. Well, let's just go a little bit further, just to see what it looks like. Not that we'd find anything. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. That looks like a great campsite over there. You see that? Yo bear. Yo bear. What do you guys think? I think this looks really good. Looks, yeah, it looks pretty great. Yeah, this looks great. Yeah. We went back to fetch our backpacks and then explored the site. Okay, so we have here a reishi mushroom, also known as a linger, uh, Ganoderma lucidum. Now there's actually one that looks very similar to this that grows out of uh, like hemlock trees. It's a different species, but since it's growing out of a hardwood or deciduous tree, I'm pretty sure this is Ganoderma lucidum. It's a medicinal mushroom and a lot of people will take it, like cut it into slices and dry it and drink it as a tea. It's very beautiful too. It's like got this really nice red varnish look. Lingjir mushrooms are highly prized and sacred Buddhist talismans called Ruyi are often carved to resemble them with their broad cap and long stalk. With camping and campfires allowed almost anywhere in the national forest, we got to collecting wood and constructing a fire ring. And today, I was going to attempt starting a fire with flint and steel. Flint and steel in principle is basically the same thing as a knife and a ferro rod. Basically, you just strike it and hopefully land a spark on this char cloth. Oh, there, there, we've got a little piece of ember. See that? Ooh, getting very lightheaded. Catch. My, my hands are like going numb right now. We got really close, but that birch bark is not fluffy enough, I think. We, we need to collect a lot more and shred it to really fine pieces, I think. Robbie decided to give it a go with more conventional methods. I'm really curious if this stuff just is not burning for whatever reason, so we're gonna try this with a lighter. Even with the lighter, the bark didn't burn too well. Likely because a lot of it was still damp. Brian didn't have much luck either. Oh, oh, oh. But eventually, the bark and the dead fern leaves ignited, and we had our campfire. There you go, there you go. You got it, you got it, you got it. Yeah, immediately put this on. These are always the best moments when camping. Settling down in the woods, relaxing by the fire, and cooking the evening's meal. Wanting to stay true to the autumn spirit, we brought apples to cook into some sort of sweet treat. I think what I'm gonna do with these apples is we're just gonna boil these. I'm gonna slice them up and boil them. This reminds me of like when you're a kid, or maybe you guys never did this, but when we were a kid, one time it was like me and my brother were like, okay, we're gonna cook. And then we made our parents jelly bean soup. And basically you just put jelly beans in water <laughs> and like other sort of terrible, unmentionable things. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water and then we'll boil this basically. My hope is that it kind of turns into um, like a sugary type of filling, kind of like apple pie filling. I don't know if that'll actually work because you usually need a ton of sugar to do that. So I'm hoping that just the natural sugars of the apples will do the trick, but I don't cook that much, so I don't actually know. Some cinnamon and cinnamon sticks. Yeah. Save the cinnamon sticks. 
liberally apply cinnamon. Actually, we'll leave one stick in because I have seen that before that you can boil cinnamon. For one thing, it smells really good. I don't know if it'll taste good, but it should. You have to have faith. You gotta have faith in these concoctions. <laughs> Trying to get um, the fire started in my solo stove just by using the embers from the fire. I'm gonna use these pocket bellows that Jim provided with us. There we go. We had heard mixed reviews about these portable bellows, but in our experience from this trip, they were actually really effective. This is exactly what I was hoping for, yes. Oh man, that looks good. Okay guys, we know we have to taste test this. Mm. <laughs> That's good. Mm, mm. <laughs> Apples and cinnamon, can never go wrong. Next, it was time to prepare the main course. So this is um, a full Thanksgiving meal that REI provided to you when you went on the Find Your Park expedition. We had actually had these dehydrated Thanksgiving foods for a year. We were pretty excited to finally get to try it out. First, we put in the stuffing. Next, the mashed potatoes. Then, some dried turkey, which we sampled a bit of. I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the green beans. We mixed it all together on the fire and let I'm it cook. I'm just gonna reheat this just a little bit and then we're gonna take it off the fire. So, this is Thanksgiving. Well, this is Halloween Thanksgiving. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> there's no Thanksgiving without some rolls. And since we don't have no rolls, we can't pay the toll. <laughs> but we do have bread. As the food cooked, evening set in and we relaxed by the fire. Nothing quite accentuates the feeling of autumn like the evening twilight. There's a sense of settling down during the fall that's reminiscent of the arrival of dusk. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Really good, even though it's just add water. So I think what we basically made was chicken pot pie filling. I should have just brought this to your Thanksgiving party. <laughs> oh my God, this is like salt of the earth, hearty home cooked meal. <laughs> you know what needs to happen. Mm. That's a Thanksgiving sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you get that roll and you just start dipping it in the mashed potatoes. Mm. Oh man. Man, that's good. You know that Thanksgiving is a time of giving thanks. And we have a lot of people to thank. Mm. That we do. So first up, I think we need to thank Sunjan Huang. He has two boys, August and Everett. <laughs> I'm sure he can't wait to take them out camping. Oh yeah. Man, that's gonna be great mm -hmm. for that man. Next up, we gotta thank John Truitt, classic. Classic John Truitt. He wants a shout out to his company, Kaleo Technologies. Kaleo. Yeah. Next, we definitely gotta thank Mike Truong. Got a shout out to his lovely wife, Heather. Filtrate Eyewear, mm -hmm. Greedo. Mm -hmm. Crom. Mm -hmm. And of course, Willie the Cat. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. awesome. what makes this all possible? Mother Nature. Mother Nature. Thank Mother you, Mother Nature. Nature. Also, a big thank you to Kieran Mockner and Jeremy Pruitt, Rhymes and Truitt. Something about that last name. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you to Greb Crib for rocking my baby to sleep. Thank you to Jim Potts for cooking this food. <laughs> Wait, why is the Greg Crib? He's a crib. Because he's a crib. Oh. Thank you to Hong Lung for being the baddest red dragon on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> of course, last but very not least, Paul Chandler. I love all these guys and gals who have donated and helped us make these adventures possible. And we love you for watching this right now. You know, I actually do. Like, I, I said that like I was a TV <laughs> presenter. But no, actually, thank you guys very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. You know what it smells like is uh, like one of those 
stores that are Christmas year round, <laughs> mm-hmm. where like all they sell are Christ- uh, cinnamon candles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> Why is cinnamon or such Yankee a Yankee Doodle Candle or whatever it's called? <laughs> <laughs> Why is cinnamon such a like cold weather? Why is it because it's hot? Cinnamon's not hot. It's not like mildly spicy. We use it in spicy oh. stuff, right? By so, your logic, jalapenos <laughs> should be the most Christmassy of. <laughs> Maybe in Mexico. <laughs> so what are we thankful for? With this trip in particular, I'm thankful that the debacle we had last night ended up being no big deal at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just thankful that we're able to do this. There's a lot of people who don't have the physical ability or the time to get out yeah, and do this. Yeah. I was actually going to say health. On those days when you do feel really good and you feel like oh, you can yeah. do anything, man, you gotta treasure those. No, I think it's so important to always give thanks though. Like, I think that's kind of what being in nature is about too because you have so little every like this food like this is so much to us right now you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. true yeah i'm gonna be thankful for my hammock tonight Mm. i'm gonna sleep really good tonight let's get that fire going again every autumn as the leaves drop from the trees there's a sense of loss the bright warmth of the summer has faded away replaced by bare trees and cloudy skies. But it's this loss that reminds us to be thankful each year of the things we so often take for granted. And with it comes a feeling of change and hope. Although it can be hard to say goodbye to the summer, There's a liberation in letting go of the past and looking forward to new opportunities in life. Life is a tumultuous, complicated journey. The fall season reminds us that things are ever-changing. But what remains consistent is our common humanity, our desire to love and support each other no matter what comes our way. And as autumn fades to winter, it's this part of our humanity that we all look to when we reflect on the changes we want to make with the new year. It was a beautiful morning. We brewed some warm coffee to stave off the morning chill. For me, it's like, it's the warm drink ritual. It's Mm. not even so much like what the drink is in Mm. particular. It's like the, the inside body equivalent of like getting into a hot tub. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) This is where we could say something about how autumn is a metaphor for life. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's no doubting though that fall has a melancholy to it. Mm. It's like, it's weird because it's an enjoyable melancholy. It's just like nostalgia. 
No, man, it, it really is a metaphor for life, though, because, like, <laughs> <laughs> like it really is, though. <laughs> it's like the cycles of life, you know? You've got the decay and the, the darkness and stuff, and you've got the mm -hmm. brightness. And, mm -hmm. But you need both of them. It's just like this trip, like, started out really not so good. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes those melancholy moments, like you said, they have a beauty to them. Mm -hmm. Like real sadness. And it's like those lows are almost like, they almost feel good in a weird way. reminds us what it really feels like to be a human being, with a full range of emotions and desires. And of course, one of our most basic desires is hunger. It was time to make some pancakes, although we'd be using some unorthodox ingredients. So this is coconut flour. I've never done this before, so let's see what happens. We melted some coconut oil on the pan and fried up the doughy mix. It didn't go quite as planned. Yep. <laughs> so this is the first attempt. It doesn't have enough egg in it, I think, and also that flame's not hot enough. So it's kind of just like the consistency of mashed potatoes. But it tastes really good, actually. <laughs> really interesting. It does taste good. We got the fire going again and decided to give the coconut pancakes another shot. This time around it went better, although it still sort of fell apart. After that, we fried up an egg. And Brian and Andrew had a wild forage treat to cook up too. Andrew dehydrated these mushrooms a few days ago, uh, and I actually found them in the forest. It's called commonly hen of the woods, um, and in Japanese, I think it's called maitake. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook up some of these. We'll try some of them without any extra stuff. And then I've also got some soup mix. I think we'll throw some in the soup. Hen of the woods is most commonly found under like oak trees near the roots. And when Brian found this, there were actually like three or four more huge clusters of them. But whenever I find wild mushrooms, I always like to cook it in oil and just add nothing else so you can taste the actual mushroom itself. Got a little fire there too. With the cooking done, it was time for a feast. This is more like a coconut biscuit, but it's good. Those are good. It, it really does taste like meat, like, the mushrooms are still a little chewy, a little, a little harder for me to chew, but still very good. Mushrooms are great in the soup. It definitely tastes like meat. It's yeah. so weird. Wow, that's really um, interesting. I'm gonna use yeah. a spoon actually. I really like the texture of these. They're very, um, it's like a very pure flavor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those mushrooms have great texture. Yeah. Awesome texture. Yeah, the mushrooms in the soup is like phenomenal. Let's do one more thing. <clears throat> Break bread. It's <laughs> <coughs> mm -hmm. oh, not enough room. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
After breakfast, we packed up and got ready to hike out. After hiking back north, we arrived at the junction that would lead us to the new portion of our trail. And along the way, I found another interesting fungus. We've got another puffball here. If it is what I think it is, these are edible if they are pure white inside, so we're gonna cut it and see. Ah. So I believe this actually is a look-alike called the poison pigskin puffball. And that usually is bigger, but it has like these dark purple spores inside. If you cut it open and this is what you see, you don't want to eat it. We continued on, and as we gained elevation, the hardwood forest gradually changed into a verdant evergreen forest. And at the top of the hill was an incredible sight. The distant hills were speckled with bright autumn leaves that sparkled in the sunlight. Our journey came to a close just as the sun began setting behind the distant hills. We descended the mountain, shrouded in dusk's shadow. As autumn comes to an end and we're left with bare trees and overcast skies and long nights, we're reminded of those times in life where we feel lost and alone. But it's only through these moments of loss and pain that growth can occur. It's in experiencing sadness that we learn to empathize with others, to be thankful for what we have, and to grow into better people. Whether you're looking at your own personal life or at the world as a whole, there's no reason to give up hope. things get bad, the good in us comes out. We may have to struggle and to fight, but in the end, we prevail. Cherish the struggles in life and the growth that they bring. And always remember, like the coming of spring after a cold winter or the rainbow at the end of a storm, they too shall pass. Thank you so much for watching the video. We hope you liked it. It was only made possible thanks to people who helped us out on patreon.com slash adventure. So if you liked the video, go ahead and like it down below, subscribe to our channel, and consider donating on patreon.com. You'll get lots of cool prizes like these beautiful postcards that we send out with each episode, behind the scenes content and commentaries, and uh, you might even get in the credits like you're about to see.
one fifth of the way to a vision quest. <laughs> uh, this is gonna fix up your vision quest nice. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm super excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. And mac and cheese bite, nacho cheese. <laughs> that's so as animated as you'll ever see, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's try this. I don't think I've had country fried steak before. Mm. I've been missing out. <laughs> Hilltop Diner, hours 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Actually, they just changed their hours. It's 8 p.m. now. Very highly recommended. Oh, Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Hilltop Diner. Maybe we'll see you again someday. And these are the moments that I live for. It's like, you get into camp, you settle down. I mean, we've said it so many times before, but just like being able to be at your own pace and have a bunch of leisure time. Mm -hmm. You know, it finally hit me just a second ago after you said that. What it is about camping, there's one specific thing that is amazing, which is that your purpose in life has never been clearer. Yeah. It's yeah, like there's yeah. nowhere to go, there's nothing to do except for what you're doing right now. Yeah. Also, this hot dog, this is like the point in the meal where you don't need to eat anything. <laughs> but you're like, I'm going just a little bit far. <laughs> I've reached that point where it, it always happens when camping. You eat, and I'm like, I'm very ready to retire to my hammock. Yeah, yeah. But then you guys are like, you gotta film something. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> no, it's funny because. Actually, out here, I never get the urge to eat more or anything. Like, like you said, you just eat whatever you need, you're completely satisfied. Because, like, nothing feels wrong out here, you know? <clears throat> but I just love being outside at night. Like, it goes back to that old uh, Calvin and Hobbes saying where it's like, every minute spent outside is a good minute. <laughs> <laughs> or outside and awake. I wonder, you know, camping has lots of rituals, right? Yeah. Fire making, tents, hot dogs, s'mores, all that type of stuff. I wonder if there's any rituals. Like, I guess swimming is kind of a new ritual mm -hmm. that we're kind of inventing every <clears throat> chance we get. And that's not exactly what we You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, some rituals that probably existed in people's cultures who live like this every day, it's like dancing and singing around the fire. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's probably something people don't do as much nowadays when they're camping. <laughs> you know? Or maybe like charades or something. You know? <laughs> if you're out here like this, you kind of want to just bask in the silence that's true. the moment, yeah. you know? And maybe that's just because we do it so, so infrequently. Mm -hmm. Like maybe if this was every day, we'd be like, yeah, let's sing it. Yeah. Or maybe if we had like a song that we could sing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do. <clears throat> Kumbaya. Yeah. No, I know. What a thrill. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good. You guys think that's good? Yeah. Today we're doing the Hiroshima blend in honor of Thomas Schlansky. You know who you are. 